If you've been looking to upgrade or build a brand new home sim with Dolby Atmos, like DTSX, the immersive surround sound formats, well, I've got two of the heavyweight flagship AV receivers here right today. Denon and Anthem, we're gonna put them head to head, see which one sounds best, coming right up. Hey guys, I'm Scott Rogan, founder and head designer of Rogue Home Cinema. This channel is all about high performance, cutting edge cinema right in your own home. So if you wanna keep all across it, remember to subscribe below for more. Immersive 3D surround sound, Dolby Atmos, DTSX, Oro 3D. The three big guys doing the most crazy, amazing, high resolution audio for cinema and also for home, we really don't miss out. So harnessing this technology for home has never been better than ever. It is a cool reason to add more speakers, get more amplifiers, but that means new processing grunt and a whole new brain of the system. So the best way of upgrading to this new technology would be in an all-in-one AV receiver. Today, we're gonna to check out some big flagships contending for a top spot in any cinema. The AV receivers of just maybe five, six, seven, eight years ago had maybe seven amplifiers and could decode HD audio, like Dolby True HD, but couldn't do the new immersive surround sound. So Dolby Atmos, DTSX, the two most popular ones, given a sound around the room and overhead, creating this object-based sound. It is the best way of watching movies. In fact, most commercial cinemas where I am from don't have Dolby Atmos yet. Although in home, that's exactly what we're delivering. And it's the authentic soundtrack. So we're not missing out. We're not held back like we used to be. So now is a great time to get on board this new technology, but it takes a few things. Not only a new processor with lots of power to decode these formats, but it's gonna need more speakers as well. So the amps we're looking at here have no less than 11 channels on board, almost more in some cases. That means lots of channels, lots of speakers, lots of processing, lots of sound for you at home. Let's check them out. We've got the two flagship models here, the Denon 8500 made in Japan, and we've got the Anthem's top offering, the MRX 1120. So there's some differences between the two, and we're gonna sonically check these guys out, which is my main purpose to hear actually how well they perform. Because on paper, that's the one thing you don't really get to understand. At $7,200, the Denon is quite a bit pricier than the Anthem at $5,300. Though instantly we can see why we've got more going on in the Denon in many, many respects. First of all, we've got 11 channels of amplifier over here versus 13 in the Denon. Now the power quality in these two units on paper are quite similar. The Denon's 150 watts, two channels running uh, at a good clean distortion and output figures. The Anthem's similar at 140. But there's a few differences. The Anthem's only capable of that full output in the first five amplifiers, while the rest are only gonna deliver up to 60 watts per channel. And that sort of makes sense because your surrounds, your backs, your Atmos backs are usually pretty close to the listeners, maybe two meters away. Whereas your front channel speakers are usually a good three or four meters away. And of course, they're the ones loaded up. Your, your LCRs, your left, center, and right are the ones really doing most of the work in the cinema. Danon has a lot of configuration. These speakers A and B, you can buy amp speakers. And of course, with 13 channels on board, you could do 7.2.6, adding your mid Atmos channels in, or you could do my favorite, nine point subwoofer times four Atmos channels on front, the nine base layer equals the wide left and right, which to me is actually the biggest gap in the whole cinema. What's also a little bit unique between the Denon and the Anthem is the way they handled the processing outputs. So the Anthem's got the full 11.1 .1 channels outputs. You can couple that to a power amplifier, no worries. Now the Denon does this in a few different ways. It's got the extra processing channels. It's got the extra zone outputs as well. 
But what's really cool is the Denon has a processor mode. Now this means that it can decouple the internal amplifiers, particularly to say the front LCR speakers where really I'd want even more juice than what a big AVR like this can deliver. So the Denon can go into processor mode, decouple the internal circuitry and dedicate the pre-out specifically for a separate power amplifier. That's really handy because we see a lot of AVRs whose pre-outs actually can cause some distortion and clipping because of all the internal gear already connected up. And the result is actually a pretty lackluster sound into your big power amplifier. Codecs are a big deal. The licensing to get this amazing immersive sound. Now, the most popular by like 90% market share or more is Dolby Atmos surround sound. Both these units are equipped. The next big one is DTS-X, which they're also both equipped, although they do not have the new DTS-X Pro, which admittedly is more for higher channel counts. So DTS-X Pro isn't going to really expand the Anthem a whole lot, but with the Denon running the extra Atmos mids or the front wides, really could do something like that, but I'm not sure whether this unit has the DSP chip able to actually handle a new Kodak like that. Unlike IMAX Enhanced, which both these units are actually had. The other really cool format is Oro 3D. This is something that the Anthem does not have, but the Denon does. In fact, the Denon really kind of has everything under the sun, except for DTSX Pro. But I tell you, one thing I do enjoy with Oro is their up mixer. Listening to music through the Oro up mixer is definitely the best platform. So the Denon has outputs and outputs and outputs. Not only is there 13 channels on here, but you can connect them in different formats, even with multi-zone application as well. This thing is crazy. Both these amplifiers are a HDMI 2.0 hardware boards and we have HDCP 2.2, which means ultra Blu-rays as we have them today, uh, Apple TV as we have them today, completely compatible. On the Anthem, we've got seven HDMI ins, one input on the front and twin output, but they're for the same room, so it might be projector versus TV. For the Denon, we've also got seven HDMI inputs, one on the front, but this time we've got two outputs for the main room and we've got a third output dedicated to a, a separate zone area. Could be a separate room like a living area. The Denon allows you to upgrade the HDMI board to 2.1. That's gonna cost you, but it is something that can upgrade. So if you do buy a unit like this and you do want to need the new HDMI technology in the future, probably not now, then you can do that with the Denon. Whereas the Anthem, it's a fixed hardware. Now, if you've been a big cinema enthusiast for a while and you're one of those types that love their legacy equipment, like their JVC Super VHS, their Pioneer LaserDisc player, then you're probably gonna need some legacy video inputs. In the Anthem, the Zip, it's HDMI only. Whereas with the Denon, you've got composite video and you have component video for some of those old school parts that are still hanging around. Not only does the Denon look after the legacy video, it's even got a phono stage and a whole bunch of analog and digital audio, whereas the Anthem supporting a couple of analog and a couple of extra digital inputs only. With the Anthem here, we've got the Arc Genesis system. This is a, a new level of Arc processing from when this unit was first released a few years ago. The new firmware has it running the new Arc Genesis system. Now, the Anthem comes with a really nice microphone, stand, and the computer does the processing work for the Anthem and loads in the data. I've got great results with the Arc over and over as we've done a lot of Anthems in the past. And uh, it is a really nice system and it's something which a user can configure and set up. The Denon here runs the Odyssey XT32 system. Uh, this is ran by Odyssey, unlike uh, the Anthem, which the Arc system's proprietary to those guys. Uh, they're a pretty big audio company owned by a whole lot of brands. So they had the grunt to do that. What's interesting is, you know, Denon Marantz is actually part of a much bigger sister group of companies these days. And they could probably do their own EQ system as well. But they're using the Odyssey, uh, ran that today. And I must say that really did improve the sound significantly. 
early days of Odyssey, um, I'd sort of avoid it. I'd just go in with even the very basic user controls. I'd usually get a better result. But today, Odyssey's really come a long way. And with the new application, you can choose just how Odyssey does manipulate the sound. So what I really want to know is how these guys actually sound. And that's what we're going to do next. Hook them up in our cinema room, give them a run. Wow, so these AV receivers really do pack a punch. Not just the technology, but of course, the sound. So I session these quite a bit. We actually live with them for about a week each. Uh, in our demo room, in the enterprise demo and review room we have here in Perth. Now, the AVRs didn't do maybe as hard a work as they could have. We had them set up in a 5.2.2 system. And we ran the Triad Bronze series speakers, LCRs up front, SATs towards the surrounds, and we have the SATs for height channels to do the 5.2.2. So the secret sauce with a lot of surround sound amps is the EQ, because the rooms and the speakers do have problems. Now we're lucky to have a highly acoustically controlled cinema in this space. So some of the problems aren't typically there, which are in other rooms, but the EQ really is the icing on the cake. The EQ definitely helped, though we did contour where the EQ worked. We actually cut the EQ just short of the tweeters on this system at around 2K. I did try it full range, but I just found on both the systems, the top end sparkle wasn't as open and clean. It was a little bit subdued. We ended up running the EQ all the way up to 2K and rolling that off before it hit the tweeter. That worked really well for us. Now the arc system, I feel controlled the bass just a little bit better than what the Denon did. I think what surprised me the most between these two AVRs is actually just how similar they sound. Anthem, though, for simply less cash out the out of the wallet, for it to have the same sort of sound as the big flagship Denon, is it's pretty cool. It means the Anthem's really holding its own in its sound quality. But here's where it gets a little bit interesting, although we didn't review specifically the Anthem 720 uh, in these sessions, it is essentially the same amplifier as the 1120, just less channels. Now, when we compare that to the smaller Denon Marantz models, the amplifier design, the processing, the chipsets, the DSPs, they're all a little bit lesser quality. So this means that really something like an Anthem 720 has the same sound quality as a big flagship Denon. That's something pretty worthy to note, I think. Well, there's definitely a different strategy around the two. Now, the Danon is obviously capable of the extra channels. So if you absolutely want to expand the channel count, as you could see the Danon as a nice processor with an effects channel amplifier built in. We want more power than what's in typically an AVR for most cinema rooms. Even in this room, at only 3.3 meters uh, uh, listening distance, we still can easily handle 300 watts into a high-efficient speaker and enjoy that result. So here's what I'm thinking. The Danon, we've got great processor pre -outs. So decouple the LCRs, run a nice big three-channel power amplifier. What's going to happen there is the existing power supply in the big Danon AVR is now fully available for all the effects channels. And because they run the same amplifier per channel, these effects channels are capable of that full, you know, 140 or so watts per channel, whereas the Anthem are limited to 60 or 70. So you end up with a really dynamic effects power supply and power amps inside the Denon. Now a really nice power amplifier to run up the front. I'd be actually looking at something like the Anthem MCA325. Good 225 watts into 8 ohms, 400 into 4 ohms. That is a beast of a power amp. The other one would be something like the ATI, the NC series. Something like that with the Denon would give you a powerful front end, really powerful effects, lots of effects channels, a really strategic way of building a big 9.2.4 channel Atmos, or of course you could do it the other way with 
1.6 by adding extra mid height. As for the Anthem, if you've got a medium sized room and you don't really want to do this whole upgrade strategy thing and just run with that one AVR, then look, the 7.1.4 format is really the most popular, most common uh, format on all the discs. So you're going to get every amplifier and every dollar worth out of the Anthem. You've got that beautiful strong front end, which is really not a whole lot different to what you get in the Denon, but for less money. Plenty of competition out there in big cinema AVRs, but there's only really two that I feel are really worth mentioning. Definitely the Marantz SR8012. Now this is the sister model of the Denon. In fact, when you look at the two units, the design is very similar. Big power supply in the middle, amps down the side. Marantz runs a toroidal power supply, a bit like the Anthem, uh, and it also runs what they call high current feedback amplifiers. So they've got some different style of sound going on there. Now it's also, instead of the 13 channels on the Danon, it's 11. So these less amplifiers, and you'd expect maybe more of it, but actually the power rating is very much the same as the other two models we've checked out. So what is different in the Marantz is, well, what's said to be sound quality. Now, the Anthem and Denon are very similar, so I'm going to put my money on the Marantz being that next level of sonic sound quality. Now, I haven't listened to the Marantz here in this room in an AB sort of head-to-head -head demo, but I have heard the Marantz running the Wisdom speakers, which are demanding 8-ohm load, and it ran them really effortlessly. And the guys there wanted to show how well some of, the, some of the Wisdom speakers run off a typical AVR, but they weren't silly. They chose the Marantz to do the job. So that's a strong contender if you are more musical and you do enjoy maybe the very fine sonics, the Marantz is probably going to actually do the job for you over the Danon and the Anthem. Can't talk about big AVRs without talking about ICAM. In fact, really, this is all these guys do, where most brands are sort of halfway to getting to the high end of their range. It's just where ICAM gets started. So this model, the AVR20 and their new HDA series, is similar price point to the big Danon and Marantz. Already, I can see looking down through the grill here, Big toroidal power transformer, just as big, I think even bigger than the other two guys, but this one's designed to just run seven channels on board, which means this has got a lot of juice up its sleeve for each of those channels. 16 channels of processor just released this year. It's the freshest kit on the block, and we're going to be reviewing this one. So guys, I want to know, do you run your AVR with some extra power amplifiers? And is the next one you're looking at, is it going to do all the work in the box? Or are you going to look at a bit of a pre-power strategy as well? So guys, to stay across everything home cinema, pro cinema, at home, then hit that subscribe button to keep in tune. And check out the web link for more cinema design services and concepts. Now remember, with great home cinema on any day, reality can go rogue.